The flow of material starts at the entrance gate and continues to the measurement systems. The calculated coefficient k takes into account all the specific nuclides included in the waste stream radionuclide vector, also called radionuclide fingerprint. If the measured waste activity is below the free release level, it goes to the exit gate. If the waste activity is shown to be above the free release level, the waste is returned to the entrance gate and later back to the waste originator. The process starts with the sorting of waste generated as a result of the plant's buildings and equipment dismantling. Materials to be measured consist typically of carbon and stainless steel, copper alloys, galvanized steel, technological pipelines, valves, cables and cable insulation materials, electrical equipment, concrete rubble, heat insulation, wood and plastic mass. The waste is sorted on the basis of three criteria, radionuclide vector, material homogeneity and material activity. Then, after sorting and size reduction, waste is loaded into crates and drums. Large size items are either packed into large ISO containers or transported separately on trays as standalone items. Each waste package is individually labelled with a barcode and then loaded onto a truck for transportation to the FRMF building. Before entering the FRMF building, the truck delivering the waste undergoes radioactive contamination monitoring. If the measurement results are below the defined thresholds, the truck is allowed to enter the building through the gate. After entering the building, the waste crate or drum is unloaded from the truck using a forklift onto a special platform. Large size items are unloaded onto a tray using the bridge crane. The waste package is then registered into the FRMF information system by reading the barcode on the label attached to the package. The delivered waste then undergoes incoming inspection, whereby the dose rate and surface contamination are measured in predefined spots. In cases where the results of the incoming inspection are below the defined thresholds, the waste is transported to the entry zone where it is stored until measurement is carried out. If the inspection results are above the thresholds, the waste is loaded back onto the truck and transported for resorting. Crates are stacked in a column of four, drums are stacked in a column of two. Large size items are transported into the entry zone by the overhead crane. A forklift is used to transport the waste crate from the entry zone to the total gamma activity measurement system and place it onto one of the system's trays. The information display reads, place the container. The information display reads, read the barcode. The operator uses the barcode reader to read the label and presses the button to start the measurement. The automatic measurement process is then underway. The conveyor starts to move the waste container towards the measurement chamber. Once the trolley reaches the central part of the conveyor, it is automatically stopped and the waste container is weighed on the scales. In a few seconds, the weight in kilograms net of the weight of the empty container is shown on the information display. Following the weighing, if the weight is within the acceptable limits, the system opens the doors of the protective cabin and then the measurement chamber doors. When the doors of the measurement chamber are fully open, the waste container moves on the conveyor through a check frame which is used to confirm that the size of the container is within the acceptable limits. If it is, the container will continue to move to the measurement chamber. As soon as the container is inside the chamber, the doors are closed automatically. The measurement of the total gamma activity of the waste in the container starts. The information display reads, Measurement. The measurement process can be controlled by a remote computer in the control room with appropriate application software, and also by an on-site computer built into the measurement facility. The measurement is complete. The information display shows the measurement results, clearance granted, meaning that, based on the results of calculations, the specific activity of the waste is within the free release levels and that such waste may be released and reused.
If the display reads radioactive, this means that, based on the results of calculations, either the specific activity of the waste is above the free release levels, or hot spots have been discovered in the container that exceed the permitted level. Such waste is not permitted to be released. Based on the measurement results, a self-adhesive label is printed out, reading either within the free release levels or radioactive and attached to the tested waste container. As soon as the tested container is returned to its initial position, the label on the container positioned on the other trolley may be read and the next measurement process may be started. Results of the total gamma activity measurements as well as calculations of specific and volumetric activities are recorded in the database and shown in the measurement report. Such reports indicate the results of specific and volumetric activity calculations as well as the factor corresponding to the requirements stated in the environmental regulatory document. The report may also contain either the corresponds to free release levels stamp or the does not correspond to free release levels stamp. Tested waste containers are transported using forklifts to the exit area if the label on them reads within the free release levels. If, however, the label reads radioactive return to waste originator, the container is transported to the temporary storage area later to be returned to the waste originator for resorting. The facility ensures high throughput radiological measurement of waste and materials for their possible subsequent reuse or sale.